I thought it would be a cute idea to get some B-roll at the farmer's market and uh, show what produce I bought, but literally all I bought was pickles. Hey guys, this is Kelsey from the future. Uh, I just wanted to insert this little clip of me not wearing any makeup or doing my hair to quickly touch on the 1K giveaway. Remember in my last video when I said if I don't reach 1,000 subscribers by the time this video comes out that I'm just gonna feel like a complete idiot, go down into a deeper, deeper hole of self-pity and, and self-hatred, and but that's okay because we're still going to do the giveaway. <laughs> However, the giveaway is not going to officially commence until I actually hit 1,000 subscribers, so in order to to know when the giveaway is going to officially start, you must be following me on Instagram. If you want to join the giveaway, you need to be following me on Instagram regardless because I will not be doing the giveaway via YouTube. I, I don't really know how or if you could even do that. So it's going to be on my Instagram. As soon as I hit 1,000 subscribers, I'm going to post a photo on Instagram. You must like that photo and then tag one person in the comments. That's literally it. It's, it's, it's very simple. And if you want to be notified when I post to Instagram, you can actually go to my page. You can click the little bell button at the top right hand corner of the screen and you can turn on notifications for posts so you will get notified whenever I make a post which I mean I don't really post that often I post maybe like once a week so probably the next like post or two will be the giveaway post I hope I'm explaining all of this well I just I'm not very good at explaining things in general and I will be announcing the winner of the giveaway exactly one week after posting that photo so one week after I hit 1,000 subscribers I will be announcing the winner on my Instagram and then probably on my YouTube YouTube somewhere in the next video. The giveaway is not going to be anything crazy because I am poor, but it is going to be just a little goodie box for me with a $10 Starbucks gift card, maybe some vegan snacks and treats, and then, you know, a couple other little surprise goodies that I'll throw in there for you. It's just like a little thank you for all your support and all the people that have been following me for this 1000 journey. Um, yeah, that's that's really all I have to say about that. Now, let's get into today's video, which I, I'm going to preface with apologizing. This is a very, like, not great video, and I was planning on including recipes in here, but I have just gotten, like, super busy this past week, and I have not had any time, so I apologize if this is a, a poor, sad excuse for a weekly video, and it doesn't really fill you up with any knowledge or entertainment, or I don't have enough jokes. I hope you enjoyed this video, and hopefully next week I will have something a little bit more exciting for you. Um, the bad news is that this week's video is kind of shitty, but the good news is it's because I have some way more interesting content coming your way that's just gonna take me a little bit longer to create and film and post and I really want to keep up with my weekly schedule, but it's super hard. It's super hard when you have like a lot of other things to do. And um, that's it, and, and roll the film. Hello there, and congrats on surviving seasonal affective disorder. If you're new to my channel, my name is Kelsey. I am a vegan and professional interior designer and a person who does not know how to put self-tanner on themselves. I was editing my last video and I realized how pasty white I am, and it was, it was eye-opening actually. So I decided to take it upon myself and do some self-tanner. I have done self-tanner before, but I'm using a new product now that I am now thinking is not a great product. I also thought it was a good idea to apply it with my hands, which is like the number one rule of self-tanning. Please do not comment saying that you need to apply self-tanner with a mitt, because I do know that I do not have a mitt, and I thought I would be fine, and it's been two days, and I just look like I'm wearing orange gloves. <laughs> I make videos every Monday about vegan food, interior design things, and lots of other unrelated things, because I have a difficult time concentrating on one particular thing at a time. Because we're moving into this glorious, suffocatingly hot, sticky time of year. That is summer, of course. I thought this would be a great time to talk a little bit about seasonal eating. If you've never heard of this concept before, seasonal eating is basically where you eat what is in season. Yep. Concept's pretty simple, it's in the name. It's something I myself have been trying to do throughout the years, but it seems as though every season rolls around and yet the only thing I have is a new life crisis. Although here in 2021, rich as fuck Western society, we can basically get whatever food we want at the grocery store any time of the year. And if not, we could probably order it two day shipping from a website that uses child labor probably. Seriously, I could right now Google a specific fruit grown only in the heart of the Amazon rainforest and I would have it here at my doorstep by Wednesday. And I can't even 
say that like it's a hypothetical statement because I've done that before. But in the olden days, before Mr. Bezos was even born, people used to eat according to what was harvested during that particular season. Because if you didn't know, food is grown in cycles during a harvest. You know, when, when the food gets harvested. I feel like I'm beating a dead horse about a concept that literally every person watching this video already knows about. <laughs> but if you don't know and you're wondering why eating seasonally could be so great, then stick around. Now why am I even bringing this up? Kelsey, please bless us with your orange mitt hands about the knowledge that you yourself only googled about seven days ago. <laughs> well, you're about to get learned. So why seasonal eating? The first reason, fresher food. This is, this is really, look at my face! <laughs> And I still look white on this camera. Although it is super cool and convenient to eat whatever food you want throughout the year, I'm sure you've noticed that some foods just taste better at different times of the year. Eating with the seasons is a great way to get fresher, tastier, and more nutrient dense foods because they're being grown and harvested during their natural cycles. And picking foods at their like peak time in the harvest is the best way to get bang and flavor in your food. Typically this also aligns with eating more locally because if there's like an abundance of tomatoes you do not need to import tomatoes from Europe, which means your food isn't like flying coach on Delta and getting to you days, even weeks after it was actually picked. It's coming from a Toyota Camry from Westchester, New York with a guy named Farmer Bill. And Farmer Bill's food is probably a lot better than France's because it's France and all of their food is terrible. One concept that I feel like a lot of people don't know about is that eating seasonally is really good for your body. Not just because foods grown during their natural cycles typically yield more nutrients, but because our bodies benefit from these different nutrients in different times of the year. So the food cycles actually can align with our body's needs, which is like, so cool. Like it's very synced up to the natural cycles of mother nature and like she knows what our bodies need to survive and thrive and like be the best versions that we can and like gives us everything that we need from the earth that we walk on. Even though we humans are dumb AF and literally have no idea what's going on. <laughs> What a concept. Oh, hold on, I need to sit differently. So back to the tomatoes. Tomatoes contain a lot of lycopene, which gives it its red color. And I really hope I'm pronouncing lycopene right. Hold on, I gotta adjust this a little bit. It helps repair cell damage, prevents free radicals, which is especially important in the summer when you're out here getting your tan on because our skin is at its most damaged and hello, sunburn in the summer. Seriously, it even helps protect you from UV rays. Lycopene is in a bunch of other foods such as watermelon, red peppers, grapefruit, all of which reach its harvest time in the summer. And these are all great foods to eat when it's hot out and you need to protect that summer bod that you definitely did not work all winter to get. Sustainability is another great reason to eat seasonally because eating seasonally is typically related with eating more locally, which is one of the best ways that you can eat more sustainably. If you purchase food from Farmer Bill, the energy exertion of his Toyota Camry is gonna be way less than that of a Delta airline. Plus the truck it took to get to the plane, plus the truck it took to get from the plane to the grocery store. And let me just add that that shorter travel time requires less preservatives and additives to be included in that food to help it stay fresher longer. Growing food out of season also in general just uses up more energy. Think about if you need to grow a food in the middle of winter that is typically a tropical fruit. This can be due to the technology, the tools, and the energy needed to help grow something that is not in its natural climate. Lower prices. To me, this just makes simple sense. Well, not super simple because I'm actually not strong in math, but the more supply there is of something, the less the price can be because there's more of it and, and the need is not up to the supply demand. <sighs> Have you noticed that strawberries are significantly more expensive in some months than others? That's because it's really hard to grow strawberries off season, which also means smaller harvest, more expensive strawberries, and they're not as good. All that travel time and energy that I won't shut up about, yup, that all costs money too. And it's factored into the price you're paying. There is of course exceptions to this. Farmers markets tend to be higher priced items because they are small businesses. They don't have as much of a harvest to sell. Um, and you can probably get something super cheap at a stop and shop any time of the year. But even at Stop and Shop, you can see that there's going to be an abundance of certain foods at certain times of the year with the prices marked down because they just have so much that they need to sell. 
And lastly, mindfulness. When you decide to eat seasonally, you're kind of forced to be a little bit more mindful about how you're eating and what you're eating. Your food shopping, your meal prepping, because now you can't just be a whole food zombie and pick up whatever you see on the counter and think, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat that today because it's $7 and I don't need it, but it seems really cool and the packaging is you actually have to use your brain. <laughs> For me, it keeps me creative in the kitchen. If I have less ingredients to work with, it kind of forces me to think up new recipes and think up new ideas and try and combine two different foods that I didn't think I could make a meal out of. For example, if I have a crap ton of tomatoes, why do I keep going back to tomatoes? There's literally a bazillion kinds of vegetables in the world and I can literally apparently only think of tomatoes. But if zucchini is not in season, so I can't make that pasta dish that I always make, that I like to make, we gotta try something different. What other kinds of versions of this tomato thing pasta that I can try and make? Here's a list of foods that are currently in season at this time of year. And that's all the knowledge I have for you guys today. I have left some seasonal eating guides down below if anyone wants to learn more about it or find out what's in season right now for you. If you're watching this out of season or you know sometime in the far future, hi future people, um, you can check out those links any time of the year and learn more about it. I wish you all a healthy and safe, beautiful start to the summer. Congratulations, we made it through this dark and long and deep tunnel that is the pandemic and the winter and and you did it you did fantastic and you only cried a little bit but that's okay it's it's okay i'm excited to get into summer with a new mindset some new resolutions just like more opportunities less sadness and less despair and and less fox news hopefully and just just move on with life and I hope all of those things for all of you guys too. And me and my orange hands, thank you guys for watching. <laughs>